inappropriate traditions. We should periodically evaluate our traditions in order to make sure they do not violate Christ's compassionate example or the clear teachings of Scripture. Here's Jean to explain. When we think about this principle, I think we need to remind ourselves that there's nothing wrong with traditions per se. We need tradition. It's just another synonym for uh, methodology, the way we do things, our forms, our structures. And you can't function without form. Uh, we, we definitely need that. But there's a problem here when tradition replaces truth or distorts truth. And that's what Jesus is going to deal with here. In His ministry, Jesus confronted these man-made traditions. You see, over the years, hundreds of regulations had been added to the Mosaic Law by the Pharisees that actually violated the law. Not just the spirit of the law, but the law itself. So Matthew records two examples for us here. The first example is the grain fields, a metaphor that Jesus used, but here He's literally talking about a grain field. And this is what we read, At that time Jesus passed through the grain fields on the Sabbath, the seventh day. His disciples were hungry and began to pick and eat some heads of grain, and of course there the word disciples probably refers to the twelve apostles. They began to take some of the heads of grain. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to Him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. They were watching Jesus like a hawk. They were watching these men like a hawk, looking for anything that they could criticize. Now, it's true that God commanded the children of Israel not to reap, reap grain on the Sabbath. He said that. But contrary to what the Pharisees had added, it was not wrong to satisfy hunger by plucking a few heads of grain, which Jesus' disciples had done. The Sabbath rest is clear. Exodus 34, 21 in the Old Testament, you are to labor six days, but you must rest on the seventh day. You must even rest during plowing and harvesting times. So that was a law in the Old Testament. But the Old Testament also recognized human need. And we read in Deuteronomy 23, 25, when you enter your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck heads of grain with your hand, but you must not put a sickle to your neighbor's grain. Now, two meanings there. Number one is, if they put a sickle to their neighbor's grain, they're stealing. But he was also saying, if you're walking through the grain and you pluck a few grains because you're hungry, that's not wrong. Anyone could do that in Israel, and you could do it any day of the week. That's the implication. And Jesus certainly interprets it that way. And so, Jesus uh, responds to them. Now, there's a test, another test, and this, revol this involves the, uh, the, the second illustration to deal with their traditions. The first illustration is saying, you're taking and making a law that is not a law when you criticize these men for simply plucking some grain on the Sabbath. But the second illustration revolves, involves healing. And so here we have this question from these men who said, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? I think what happened was that he really countered them regarding the grain and caught them in a trap and so they change the subject and take it to another issue. Well, Lord, is it right to heal? And notice what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 12, verse 11. But He said to them, What man among you, if he had a sheep that fell into a pit on the Sabbath, wouldn't take hold of it and lift it out? And there He's dealing with a freedom that's even in the Old Testament. 
If you got a knox in the ditch, you had the freedom on the Sabbath to pull him out. And so Jesus really very shrewdly inserts this question to their question. And then he says, a man is worth far more than a sheep. So it is lawful to do what is good on the Sabbath, to do good on the Sabbath. He said, you have made animals more important than human beings. That was the extent of their traditions that were out of harmony with the will of God. And then, in order to make his point, Jesus turned to this sick man and said, then he told the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was restored as good as the other. That's an amazing response to this criticism relative to traditions that were out of the will of God. And as a result of this, we see the ultimate in hypocrisy. Notice their response. But the Pharisees went out and plotted against Him how they might destroy Him. To destroy Him because He had healed a man on the Sabbath, which was certainly in harmony with the Old Testament law, but was violated by their traditions. So Jesus is dealing with that issue very, very seriously. Now the reflection response question is, in what ways do some Christians today add to the teachings of the New Testament and become more concerned about these man-made traditions and the needs of people? Well, the fact of the matter is, I think that many of us, probably in this room, have experienced legalism in churches, Christian churches. And by that we simply mean the root of that is that the church adds rules and regulations that are not clearly defined in Scripture. You see, if we want to avoid legalism, we've got to go back to what does God say? What are the directives of Scripture? And when we apply those, we have to be very careful that we don't add form and tradition and requirements to what God has already said. What we do add to it is that which is in harmony with what God said, not that which is just tradition or an outward performance. Because tradition and legalism is an outward expression lacking inward reality. Now the other extreme, obviously, is license. But the way that we avoid legalism is that we need to follow the clear teachings of Scripture and make sure that our traditions do not add burdens or contradict what God has said. You see, Christianity becomes cultural in ways that can violate the freedom that we have in Christ. And when we add cultural tradition that conflicts with our freedom in Christ, we become guilty of traditions that are out of harmony with God. We call that legalism, and the Pharisees exemplified that to the nth degree. So here's the principle. We should periodically evaluate our traditions in order to make sure they do not violate Christ's compassionate example or the clear teachings of Scripture. 